Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I have a mystery object to look at today. A viewer named Ronnie sent me this. I don't know where he got it from. He didn't know what it was either. And uh, he thought it might be interesting to, to look at and figure out. And at first glance, I thought field strength meter because we've got a, well, there's an antenna on the top. You know, and you've got a meter. A little label up here says antenna. Um, down here, though, we have three controls, gain, zero, and tune. So I'm thinking, hmm, that's kind of interesting if it's a field strength meter. And the gain has a switch on it. Um, meter movement marked zero to 100. No other identifying information on the front. On the back, there's an earth ground plug, a headphone plug, small eighth inch, not a quarter, labeled simply phone. And down at the bottom of it, there's a tiny little label here that says made in Japan. So this was a commercial product, but those are the only identifying marks on it. There's, uh, there's nothing else that says what it is or what it does. Now, thinking that it was a field strength meter, uh, what doesn't make sense is the earphone jack on the back, the tune control. Gain and zero, I could see if this was an active field strength meter, but what is tune all about, you know? So this is an interesting looking little thing. And something rattling around inside of it. So I have not opened it up yet. I figured we'd open it up on camera. And then uh, assuming that there's some, elect some active uh, electronics inside of it, since it's obviously powered, uh, we'll reverse engineer it, draw a schematic, and we'll try to figure out what this mystery meter does. So let me reposition the camera and we'll open it up. Okay, to get inside this guy, it's uh, a neat little case, but this piece is one piece that wraps around this back. And there's two screws, four, six, eight screws total that are holding this front panel to that. So we'll get these screws out of here and let's, uh, let's see what's going on inside this guy. Interesting note, this meter is made by Western Electrical Instruments Corporation, Newark, New Jersey, USA. So this unit's made in Japan, but the meter was made in the U.S. The meter itself, the meter movement. Okay, all the screws are out. Let's see what we got in here. One AA battery was what was rattling around. And there, there is our circuitry. Huh. Well, it's a single transistor amplifier. We got one transistor, one, two, three, four resistors, an inductor, two capacitors. So it looks like it's a real simple single transistor amp. I think it's just an active field strength meter. The uh, headphone jack, well, where's our diode? We'd have to have a diode. Huh, headphone jack goes up to the uh, gain control, so that must just be volume for the headphones. Huh. All right, well, I'm going to free this little circuit board up here, and uh, I'm going to draw up a schematic and see if we can figure out what's going on. Ugh, those screws are a little corroded. Yeah. Okay, well, let me get the board loose, 
and uh, get a schematic drawn up, and then we'll uh, we'll examine this. I'm thinking it's a really fancy field strength meter. Alrighty. Well, it looks like we do just have an amplified field strength meter. Uh, it's an odd arrangement. The battery is uh, set up with a positive chassis, so the metal chassis goes to the positive of the battery, and that's what's switched. And then the negative of the battery goes into the circuit as a as a source voltage, which I labeled B minus. So our antenna comes in, and uh, we have a diode for rectification of the incoming RF to drive the transistor, and then we have a tuned circuit. Now this tuned circuit, the inductor is not very big. I figured it was a higher frequency range, so what I did was I hooked up the uh, mini VNA, and I scanned the circuit or the tuned circuit right here from this point to this point. I'm sure that there was a little bit of interference from the rest of the circuitry in here, but we could still see a peak um, when I was looking at impedance. So with the uh, capacitor plates fully unmeshed, um, I saw a uh, that first peak um, of lowest impedance there, so the, the rough band pass of the uh, tuned circuit around 29.1 megahertz. And then with the capacitor plates fully meshed, it went down to 24. So, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Is this just for the 10 meter band? Maybe. So back to the schematic. From there, it's, it's really pretty straightforward. It's just a transistor amplifier. Um, B minus bias resistor here on the base, a capacitor here to filter the uh, rectified RF coming in that drives the transistor, and then the emitter is just right from the ground, which is which is positive side of the battery. Um, bypass cap there, collector, and this is driving the meter. And then this is the uh, zero adjustment on the meter here. This resistor over here, which goes from the other side of the meter uh, to a resistor divider network, is gain. So this resistor divider is providing us with a, a voltage that then is well, it's all backwards because it's a it's a, a positive chassis, so B minus is is our source voltage um, through the transistor here to ground or from ground this way if you want to go classically. Anyway, uh, that's our gain adjustment. Um, and this is the tune control over here, or the variable capacitor on the tune circuit. So this gives it a little bit of selectivity. It looks like uh, it covers uh, around the uh, 10 meter band maybe even citizens band uh, you know this this could have been uh, made for the CB market as a as an amplified uh, signal or field strength meter because it looks like this tuned circuit goes from 24 to 29 megahertz so 10 meters or C or CB um, so yeah that's pretty much it one weird thing the the phone connector on the back uh, is only connected to the power switch and the power switch switches it to chassis ground um, which really wouldn't do anything when the battery's unhooked so the phone connector is just kind of like passively going through the whole circuit I would guess that would be for monitoring AM I bet this is for citizens band uh, yeah it's got to be for citizens band because when that switch is, is in the off position so you're not using it as a meter the phone jack on the back is connected into the chassis ground and the other side of it goes to uh, um, B minus, which is in the circuit. So it, it's it's gonna um, the whole circuit basically is just gonna pass through the phone. So you know you're gonna get some rectification here, some filtering here. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna be able to hear the AM modulation in the uh, headphone jack uh, in that configuration. So that's what I'm guessing this is. This is a field strength meter, probably marketed to the citizens band. Uh, radio market, um, which would also be useful on the uh, 10 meter amateur band. Uh, and it's an active meter, single uh, battery. So I guess the next thing to do is to uh, put a good battery in it. And uh, well, I'll take it upstairs uh, where the radios are and we'll see if we can get it to indicate anything when I uh, transmit on 10 meters. Okay, we're upstairs. And uh, I have the meter sitting up here on the table. Right next to my mini mag loop. Some of you might remember this thing. And I got it tuned for 24 megahertz 
and I got, oops, I didn't get the camera right here. There we go. I've got the loop tuned for uh, 24 megahertz, the 12 meter band, which is the highest it'll, I can get it. But that's close enough, as you recall from the uh, VNA. This uh, tuned circuit in this meter goes from about uh, somewhere around 24 up to 29.9 megahertz. So we should be able to get a good indication. Now, I turned it on and the zero function works. If I goes down below above, so I can zero the meter. And that's just adjusting the gain of that little active transistor amplifier. So we'll leave that at zero. I'll go over here to the uh, FT817, which is uh, in CW mode, presently set to output half a watt. And you can see that it deflects. Now I'm going to switch the Yezu into AM mode. 24 megahertz band is closed today anyway. I'm not going to interfere with anybody, but what we want to do is uh, I'm going to key down. Yep, you can see we got some deflection. Uh, KB9 RLW. And Yezu's reverse AM modulation that they do on the 817. All right, so. The tuning control tunes that pre-selector circuit, and you can see how that can tune out my 24 megahertz signal as I move it up, and remember it went up to 29, so you could easily fine-tune that pre-selector to find the peak for the frequency you're on. And then the gain adjustment controls how sensitive it is, as you'd expect. Now I'm now, oh, eh, hand capacity. I'm I'm near the antenna, I'm stretching across the antenna as I reach in here. So my hand is is actually increasing the RF coupling to the box. But uh, in fact, I'm I can move my hand around the antenna and affect its tuning. <laughs> you can see that deflection in the field strength. But yeah, there you go. What we have is a field strength meter designed for uh, CB use, citizens band use. Well, I could uh, I could take the tuning front end out of it and make it broad banded, and then it would work for uh, for all of HF spectrum, I suppose. Or it's a nice box and meter for another project. Not sure what I'll do with it, but at least we've solved the mystery of this little meter. Now we know what it is. Um, as far as its age, hmm. I don't know. That transistor, I would think it's somewhere in the 60s maybe that it was, uh, that it was made, but uh, that's just a guess. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little exploration into this mystery meter. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.